Black Mirror is becoming a reality and Apple glasses are coming. They're not far away. Here's what we know. So Apple glasses would work using a technology called augmented reality, which is essentially Pokemon Go. Think of it this way. You have reality over here and virtual reality over here. Augmented reality is somewhere in the middle, combining the real world with the virtual one. And we have that on our phones already. You can use the Measure app on an iPhone to accurately measure the world with depth sensing in your cameras. And we've got games that add characters into the real world. But the functionality of AR, augmented reality, is still pretty limited. And it's clunky. You have to hold it up and it feels much more fake than VR. That's where Apple glasses come in. The glasses would essentially be able to combine the incredible wearable tech of virtual reality with the practicality of augmented reality. But at first, I wasn't buying it. Sure, John Prosser says Apple glasses are coming, but why Apple? And how would this be helpful in our daily lives when we're already so satisfied using our cell phones. And plus, how could anyone even know this? Apple's supposed to be so secretive about their products, and they reportedly hire FBI agents to keep them disclosed. But then, I checked a secret server full of Apple leaks called Wikipedia, where right in the open, easy to find on Google, is a list of all the companies Apple has ever acquired. And starting in 2014, it's impossible not to notice a trend of Apple dramatically increasing the number of augmented reality focused startups they were buying. Companies like Matayo, Flyby Media, Vervana, a company that specialized in augmented reality head-mounted displays, and even Aconia Holographics in 2018, a company that specializes in lenses for augmented reality glasses. The list of Apple's acquired companies is actually really interesting, and it even reveals some of what Apple has coming even further down the line. But it goes past these lists, and the evidence that glasses are coming doesn't end there. Ever since iOS 11, augmented reality has been a ginormous focus for the company, and they've even added LiDAR scanners to the iPad Pro and all the new iPhone 12 Pros, which barely do anything to enhance your experience on those devices, but that allow Apple to continue experimenting with LiDAR scanning as they prepare for the release of the glasses, which will use a LiDAR scanner within them to sense depth when using AR. Plus, it encourages more and more developers to work on augmented reality, but they're doing more more than encouraging. Apple's described augmented reality as a vision of if the line between your imagination and the real world didn't exist. And with the heavy push towards AR kit for developers, Apple's probably hoping developers will make a ton of AR-focused apps without even realizing what they're making them for, so that when the not-so-secret Apple glasses come along, they'll be prepared to run their programs using AR. It's a really smart strategy, having developers around the world tasked with making AR-focused apps for iPhone and iPad with LiDAR scanners. And as soon as Apple feels there's enough, Apple can release the Apple Glasses, which will now have an entire app store built in full of AR apps originally made for other products, but that could work even better on the glasses. But there's even more that these glasses will be able to do than just look at IKEA furniture or play the trivial games we may have now. Imagine live AR video content where instead of watching AR content on a screen, Marquez Brownlee could be sitting right next to you using augmented reality, showing you all the new features of the latest iPhone. Or you could have map directions projected right on the street in real time. And this may seem like a crazy expensive product, but Rumor has it that all of its data processing will happen on your iPhone, with glasses just mirroring what your iPhone is thinking. Much like the first generation Apple Watch, which really couldn't do much unpaired, with the true internals being wirelessly tethered to the iPhone itself. That means the price should be somewhere around $4.99, plus any prescription costs. So not bad for Apple's next revolutionary product. But as cool as all this may be, how will it even work? And we'll get to that in just one second, but first, this video is sponsored by me. I run a subscription service called Jack Gordon, and with Jack Gordon, you can change your location and watch UK Netflix. You can build your own custom website, you can shop on Amazon and use Wikibuy, and you could even listen to audiobooks with my free 90-day trial. Just subscribe down below. 
Anyways, Apple's probably learned a lot from all of the failed technological glasses that came before it. From the Snapchat spectacles to Google Glass, a built-in camera is almost definitely out, as that feature seems like a violation of privacy in Apple's eyes. And having learned from the clunky controls of the Google Glass... Okay, Glass. Take a picture. And their terrible look. They look terrible. Apple knows not to make the same mistakes that they did. The Google Glass used a prism, which showed a 2D image into your eyes, which was cool because it allowed you to have access to what your phone shows you without actually having to hold it up. But it wasn't augmented. It was just a 2D display in the corner of your eye. Apple Glass will work totally differently by projecting a holographic image from Aconia Holographics into both lenses of the Apple Glass, so it will naturally fill your vision with whatever content you want, even if that content is just a 2D video like Google's. Unlike the head-turning and awkward touchpad of the Google Glass, the Apple Glasses will be controlled via hand gestures, much like the take-a-picture mode on DJI drones. And Apple can only hope we've reached a good time to release these glasses based on the Gartner hype cycle. The hype cycle takes place with nearly any piece of consumer technology. It starts with the media and journalists trying the tech and drawing hype. But then pretty soon the world catches wind of its severe flaws and people realize the technology probably won't be ready for a long time. But over time, the product gets better and better, slowly improving until it's ready for release. And for Apple glasses, they're probably around here. Augmented reality is in good shape, but it probably needs a lot more work before the product will be ready for sale. But every day, as more and more data from the LiDAR scanners already on Apple's products are shared with Apple, the product gets closer and closer to release. But I looked into it even further, and I realized that there was probably another feature that the Apple glasses would almost certainly have that would allow you to interact with the real world. And for that, you have to look at the deep code embedded in iOS 14. Developers around the world found these hidden circles in Apple's software, and nobody knew what they meant. But with John Prosser reporting that the Apple Glass, as they will be calling it, will be scanning Apple proprietary QR codes, the dots are starting to connect. The glasses will probably scan QR codes that look like these, that are posted around cities or spaces to store new data. Maybe the feature works like the new app clips, which would allow you to access apps for a one-time use on the glasses. I don't know. What we do know is that features like this are coming, and probably so much more, that Apple just wants to surprise us with. But no matter what, Apple is going to have to be super careful with releasing a device like this. Not just with the hype cycle, but with the idea. It sounds very much like it came out of an episode of Black Mirror. And even if Apple makes the product just look like normal glasses, it almost makes the situation worse, as they look more suspicious, as people could have them on and be looking at content without the people around them even knowing. How will Apple prevent people from cheating on tests using these glasses? Or ruining normal conversations, because while someone's trying to talk to them, they're busy watching AR content on their glasses. I mean, I guess the same could be said about an Apple Watch on your wrist, but this is a whole new level of distracting. And at the moment, we don't know the answer to these questions, but we will soon. Rumor has it Apple will release them essentially as soon as the pandemic ends, as that will be when people can come in person and try them out. They want the media to be there. Or maybe they will just have to hold a virtual reality event to release these glasses. We don't know yet. But the technology is real, and it's coming. Developers around the world are working on AR apps, and although many probably don't realize that their apps will eventually be available on the Apple Glasses, the Glass will almost certainly become the new standard device in Apple's lineup. Steve Jobs always said you had to kill your own success before someone else did. And this is them doing that. Apple has relied most of their income for years now exclusively on the iPhone. And Apple doesn't like doing that. They have a sense that at some point they're going to need to move on from that product. And although smartphones aren't going anywhere anytime soon, this is Apple's step in that direction. The same way they killed the iPod with the iPhone, I would venture to say that sometime, someday, they will kill the iPhone. Hi, I 
got a haircut, and this video is sponsored by vidIQ. vidIQ is a service for YouTubers and online content creators to help grow their businesses. With its free Chrome extension, you can get access to analytics no one else is showing you, like how your videos compare to other creators in every metric. And with a premium account, you can use features such as channel audit, trend alerts, and even competitor analysis to find what's working for everyone else so you can apply it to your own videos. It's been endorsed by the likes of the CEO of VidCon and even Mark Cuban. And thanks to vidIQ, you guys can get a free 30-day trial on any vidIQ plan, allowing you to experience the best of what vidIQ has to offer at no cost to you and you can just cancel anytime. Just go to vidIQ.com slash Jack Gordon and use code Jack Gordon at checkout. Thanks again to vidIQ for sponsoring this video. It's a great service and it's one that I actually use and recommend. And using my link in the description of this video is an awesome way to support the channel. Are Apple glasses just a fad that will eventually go away? Or are they really the future of Apple's business? Let me know in the comment section down below because guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Don't forget to ring my like button and subscribe to my bell. I gotta go to San Junipero. See you next time.